don't know anybody on the tour that can hit the ball like that. Hi guys and gals, Chuck from Entered by the Legend, uh, Mike Austin Rules. I hope everybody's safe and is being safe. Uh, while we're stuck inside, we can try to improve our swings by using mirror drills. Uh, I do the same outside using your shadow. Um, so let's really purposefully use this time to help uh, improve our swings. Uh, you know, so many people have sent me tapes in the past and I realize they're videotapes of their swings. And while they're interested in like the hand, the hand motion, etc., what I find generally is, is that they don't have the pivot correct and therefore their swings aren't efficient or correct and it's causing them all sorts of problems. I have found myself, if my swing goes awry, I've often caught it in either mirror work and or by a shadow and helped correct that. So let's get right down to the details. First of all, it's a fundamental or an essential of Mike's swing concepts that the joints move as they were intended to move. So for example, your heel, I'm sorry, your knee is a hinge. It's supposed to bend and unbend, flex and unflex. And that's precisely what happens in the Mike Austin swing. In fact, it's quite simple. As Mike said, it's just like I'm walking. And that's the motion you're going to have. Uh, in fact, it's more akin to, as he would say, to a woman walking, because a woman will tend to walk, shift her weight from hip to hip, this way and then that way, this way and then that way. And you'll see that that is the concept in the backswing. Now I'm going to shift to one leg. It's like you're on So what do we do first? First we've got to have a narrow stance. Mike didn't want a stance that was any bigger than 8 to 12 inches between your heels. Why? This allowed you to shift your weight and have the hips move freely. As he would say, a wide stance prevents that motion. Get your feet closer together. Put your, put your feet not over 12 inches. Now, this is, now these legs are working kind of into your hips. Now you don't want to work in the work in the knee. Now these things are working against the hips. But if you stand this way, you can do this. It's funny, it's now slowly getting back to this more narrow stance. The same thing happened in skiing. If you were a skiing, skier, you might remember in the 80s, all of a sudden they started teaching you this wide stance for stability. No, you want a narrow stance so that you can make the appropriate motions while skiing that promotes balance, etc. Um, so just like in skiing, Mike wanted mobility, not stability. And this more narrow hips will allow you to make to be mobile and make all of the necessary moves. So you take this narrow stance and you stand up straight. You don't bend from your knees, you would lose your height. You move your butt back until it's several inches behind your heel line, such that your arms will hang straight down at approximately your toes. You take your grip, and now I have a problem. My rear arm can't reach the club. What do I do? I allow this rear leg or this rear knee to bend, and I cave in this side. Well, now I can reach the club, and I have my stance. What do we do from here? I step on my rear leg, allowing it to straighten. 
At the same time, this lead leg, this knee is allowed to bend and the heel comes up. Why? Because it will, as we'll talk about in a second, allow me to swing against this post. Mike had a concept of the spine, obviously behind you, but a long spine when you took the shift, all running all the way down your front or your back, the chest line, and all the way through your leg, as if it was one long spine in which you were allowed to turn around or permitted to turn around. So when you take that standing up, or you allow your weight shift to your right and allow this lead leg to bend, I'm in now a very strong position. I can sit here all day. Mike used to call it the tripod balance. We've got one post here, you've got another post through your shin, and you've got this balance point through your upper thigh or your thigh that gives you this nice tripod balance. This is a strong position, not with knee flex, flexed. He would say, picture the strong man in the circus. When he held up a huge weight or carried people on his shoulders, he would always have straight legs, not bent knees. He would collapse under the weight if he did that. So this is the strong position. When you do this step into your rear leg, make sure this lead hip feels like it's coming under your belly button. It doesn't spin in front of you in front this way, it comes underneath your belly button. I'm also not trying to spin my hips. Mike would say that's like a bear moving his or brushing his butt against the tree, or rubbing his butt against the tree. Mike wasn't, he would say, he'd say everybody's trying to wind up the backside. I'm not. I'm swinging in front of me. I'm allowing my front of my body, those muscles to move, wind up the backswing. It's this. What happens is I do this as well. This, the lead side crimps under. Again, I feel this hip coming underneath my belly button. This side concaves, this side gets rounded. When I do that, this lead shoulder went from a position of parallel, then I took my stance and it was slightly lead shoulder up, now it drops down. All of this happening, by the way, under a steady head. That's why you've got to get in a mirror with something behind you and check it out. Can I move this underneath the steady head? It's bang. Not this, and I have felt it in my own swing and, and, and saw it when I've gone awry, I feel like I'm bending everything or going to my rear side, but I found that this twisting action was going on instead of this. This concave looked and this lead side, this rounded side on this rear leg or rear side. It's boom. Here's a key drill. Practice your backswing. I'm a righty. Now practice it the other way. Get your stance and practice it left-handed or right-handed if you're a lefty. What happens? This rear leg, now again, straightens. This now, your now front leg flexes and starts pointing in toward the ball. This shoulder starts going down. Here's my left-handed backswing. Here's my backswing. Here's my left-handed backswing. Is this side concave? Yes. Is it side bow? Yes. Why is that important? for two reasons. One, it's good to use and stretch your muscles uh, in both directions. But just as importantly, you're going to find in a second that that's part of your full swing. When we step back here, our downswing will start with stepping on your lead heel, straightening this lead leg, allowing the weight shift, allowing the weight shift to go to your lead leg. What happens from here? You take your left-handed backswing or your reverse backswing. That's what's gonna happen. You go from here, backswing, down, and now you're gonna take your left-handed or reverse backswing. It's here, step, 
here, all underneath a steady head. Isn't that wild? That feels so different. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody teach you any other way than that? No. I'd run everywhere. Oh.